Hello friends. So today we're going to be talking all about appraisals and appraisal waivers. Super exciting topic, but in all seriousness, it is super important to understand this topic because in today's crazy competitive market, there are a lot of people offering appraisal waivers. Not everyone understands them. So if you are thinking about offering this, it is really important to understand. So we're going to cover bank waived appraisals. We're going to cover putting out an appraisal contingency waiver on an offer you're putting in for a home. And then we're going to go through a specific example of what it would look like if you put in a purchase price and the appraisal came back short and what exactly would happen and what would be your options. So let's get right into it. So first I wanna cover what it means to get a bank waived appraisal. Now, a lot of people are confused about this because they think, well, I'm gonna go find a lender that will approve to waive the appraisal. No, 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 <laughs> that does not happen that way. So lenders do not have carte blanche to say, oh yeah, I'll, I'll waive this appraisal for you. It's not possible. What happens is the federal government is responsible for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that have their own algorithm to figure out if a property and a purchaser would get an appraisal waiver. So there's all these crazy things that go into that. It could be the value of the purchase, the value of the homes around the purchase. It could be the credit score of the person purchasing the home. There's all these factors that go into a computer. The computer does its job. And then Freddie or Fannie say, yes, we approve a appraisal waiver for this purchase. No one in the transaction, the lender, the realtor, the purchaser has any influence about whether or not they get approved for that. So just really important to keep in mind. I'm not going to go into that in more detail. Next up, I want to talk about waiving your appraisal if you're putting in a purchase. In today's really competitive market, people are offering appraisal waivers because that's what's becoming very common. In order to win the bid, you have to be competitive. And this is one of the things that does make a competitive offer. Keep in mind that if you are competing against full cash offers, there is very little you can do. No matter what you waive, if you are getting a mortgage and you're up against full cash buyers, you are pretty much blown out of the water. Sorry to say that it's going to be very hard to win a mortgage backed offer. So just be mindful that not everything is in your control. You can put your best foot forward and it still might not win you the house if there's cash buyers. And there are a lot of cash buyers right now. So I do want to explain that. Let's talk about what an appraisal is first. So we make sure everyone understands the appraisal is the value placed on the property by the lender. So the lender does their own process to determine what they think the value of the property is. It's independent. You can't influence it. Realtors really can't influence it, even though sometimes I think they think that they can. Um, you can contest appraisals, of course, and try to get that value reevaluated. In some cases, that works. In some cases, it doesn't. So an appraisal waiver is where you as the purchaser say to the seller, hey, I want your house so badly that I'm willing to pay a gap between what I want to purchase the house for and what the appraiser says the value of the home is. Now you can do a partial waiver, which means that you say, I have up to 20K or up to 50K to cover the gap. So let's say you were purchasing the house for 500, the appraisal comes in at 450. Now, if you put in a full appraisal waiver, you are going to have to cover a $50,000 gap because the bank is not going to give you a loan for more money than the home is worth. So if you do full appraisal waiver, you are saying that you're gonna cover whatever difference. Keep in mind, this is really, really important. You cannot, with an appraisal waiver, you cannot ask the sellers to renegotiate the purchase price after the fact, okay? So if you think that you might be able to do that in this case, in this scenario, you are waiving that right when you do an appraisal waiver. You can also do partial and say, I have up to 20 or 30K. And then of course the seller, if they have offers that are full appraisal waivers, yours might not look as appealing because they're gonna have to worry about what that appraisal might come in at, especially if the purchase price offers are way above the list price. Say the list price is 475 and you have offers at 510, 530, 550, there's a good chance that that appraisal is gonna come in lower because most sellers and most selling agents are placing properties on the market 
for the value that seems to be true at this current time. And there's a lot of competition. So in order to look competitive, you're gonna have to really put your best foot forward. And I would say in order to do that, you need to be very honest with your realtor and your lender about your financial situation. So if you're purchasing a house for 500K and you have 120 grand to put into the home, you need to be able to structure that money in a way that is most appealing to the seller and that isn't going to leave you basically lying about what you can offer and what you're willing to put into the home. We're gonna go into a specific scenario in just a moment. All in all, what you need to understand about appraisal waivers is that a bank waived appraisal is out of everyone's control. It's purely based on an algorithm in the computer and you can't pick a specific lender or person who will give you that bank waived appraisal. Number two, the appraisal waiver on your end does not allow you to renegotiate the purchase price and you have to decide if you're doing partial or full. And if you are doing full, you have to be prepared to pay that gap between what you said you're gonna purchase the home for and what the home comes up worth from the appraisal. So now let's get into a specific scenario because I think it'll be really valuable for you to hear. Let's keep using the 500K example. So let's say you saw this home, you loved it, you offered 500K and the appraisal comes back at 450. Now, when you put in your offer, you said that you were going to put 20% down. 20% at 500 is of course 100K. And what we're gonna do here though, is we're actually gonna work backwards because it will make you understand a little bit better exactly what an appraisal waiver looks like in real life scenarios. Let's say for example, you have 130K to go all in on this property. And of course, I would never say that if you have 130K total in the bank, do not put all of your dollars in. You need to, I would suggest, leave at least 10 to 20K aside because you could purchase the home and the next day the hot water heater breaks or something goes wrong you know even just moving expenses or repainting the home there's some expenses so always leave at least 10 or 20k depending on the purchase price maybe you need a little bit more or a little bit less aside let's say you have 130k to spend on this 500k home you've now learned that you have a 50k gap between a 500k purchase price and a 450 appraisal price now you have a gap of 50K because you said you were gonna purchase for 500 and the appraisal value came in at 450. So you need to use out of that 130, you're gonna need 10K aside for closing costs. Now that brings you to 120. And now we're saying that you're gonna use 50K for that gap that you said you were going to cover. So now we're at 70K, okay? So originally you had said you were gonna put 20% at 500. Now you have 70K, which means that you are now putting less than 20% down on this home. That means that you would have to then incur what's called PMI, private mortgage insurance. And your lender will explain this to you much more in detail. But essentially you have to pay an extra insurance price, which can sometimes be very, very low depending on your credit score and other factors to cover the fact that you're not putting 20% down on this conventional loan. That's not a bad thing. That's an easy way to buy the property. Now, if you have more money, you can put the 50K gap in plus the 20% and you won't actually have to cover that PMI. But remember, like I said, the PMI could be very small. If you did wanna put that 100K down and also have to cover the gap and not have the PMI, then you would have to put 20% of the 450, which is 90 plus the 50 plus the 10 for closing costs. So now we're at 150K. Hopefully that makes sense but if you only have 130K to put into the property, that's where that PMI would come in. You could still purchase the property, but like I said, you'd have less than 20% down. I hope all this makes sense and helps you understand appraisals and appraisal waivers better, and this example was helpful to you. If you have any specific questions, feel free to comment below, subscribe, like, let me know how I'm doing, let me know if you have any other questions or videos you'd like me to do. Take care and be well.